Our Father, we thank you for today. We commit our meeting into your hands. We ask that you be with us, grant us understanding, and glorify yourself in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so with that, I'll just say a few words about this um, program that we are running, our masterclass series. We put it together because we realized the need for pharmacists to publish more, write more. And um, we hope that as we go through this, we will give pharmacists the competencies and the confidence to um, publish their work, whether it is with respect to um, operational research or some other academic research that they may have undertaken. So far, we've looked at becoming a researcher. We've discussed plagiarism. We've discussed referencing, um, using referencing softwares. Uh, we've discussed copyright and intellectual property, a researcher's perspective. We've looked at literature search, looking database, using databases effectively. And the last, at our last meeting, we discussed writing an abstract. And we, we use the same structure that we've been using so far. Today, we are going to look at designing and presenting a poster, how to grab and sustain attention. You will recollect that um, at the beginning of the week or sometime earlier, we sent you some, um, we sent you some abstracts. And these are the abstracts that we are going to use to prepare our posters today. Hopefully by the time we have finished, now that we know how to write an abstract, we will write our abstracts and submit our, um, my apologies. We'll write our abstract and submit our posters to the Ghana College of Pharmacists and other conferences for presentation and also prepare our posters. By the time we have gone through this, we hope that everybody will be able to, to write not only abstracts and, and prepare posters, but also um, write, present their work and deliver um, and their, um, deliver properly on their presentations and also write articles completely. So these are our expectations. And today, to take us Today, to take us through designing your presentation, to take us through designing and presenting your poster is Dr. Vivek Trivedi. He is a pharmacist by training and has several years of experience in both industry and academia. He worked in the industry after completing his undergraduate degree before enrolling for a master of uh, a Master of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences. He started his academic career as a lecturer in formulation science at the University of Greenwich, where he stayed until April 2019. He then moved to the University of Kent, where he is currently employed as a senior lecturer in drug delivery. Dr. Trivedi's research is centered around two areas, solubility improvement, of BSC2 drugs and oral delivery biomole biomolecules. His interests strongly revolve around the use of green processing methods such as supercritical carbon dioxide to develop suitable strategies for drug delivery. He developed a platform known as Solid Core Drug Delivery System for the oral delivery of biomolecules. His interests also include the application of SCCO2 to manipulate the physical properties of drugs and excipients to prepare cyclodextrin, cyclodextrin drug complexes, perform solvent-free coating, and obtain drug loading in organic and inorganic excipients. He is very well published on these topics and regularly presents his work at national and international conferences. He has attracted funding from various industrial sources, 
as well as the EU Royal Society, the Royal Society of Chemistry to conduct research in the areas summarized above. So we can see that we, we cannot do much better in getting a resource person for this topic. And so with that, I'll ask Dr. Vivek Trivedi to please take over and take us through designing and presenting your poster. But just a, a second, before that, when we have finished with the presentation, as we normally do, we will go into our breakout groups and you received two abstracts. We'll discuss which ones we'll be using. And with the abstracts, we will then prepare our posters and present during the plenary after the breakout rooms. And so with that, I'll hand over Dr. Vivek Trivedi, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that uh, you can still hear me okay. Um, so thank you very much for the introduction and uh, <clears throat> we're not that many. So we could, uh, I'm, I'm happy if you wanted, if you wanted to, uh, uh, do this workshop as a dialogue rather than um, a monologue from my side. And so it's entirely up to you. If you have any questions, uh, please just shout out. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be offended if you stop me um, midway the presentation. I have a very simple presentation. And I think when I was um, a bit younger um, and I had to prepare my first presentation, I just didn't know where to start. And um, so, uh, so as I've sort of uh, uh, I, I would like to talk, take you through the journey um, on uh, PowerPoint. Uh, most of us would be using PowerPoint to prepare a poster. Um, <clears throat> and basically just to, just to go through the basics of why to prepare a poster uh, and uh, uh, how to present a poster, etc. cetera. Um, just a show of hands, I'm sure all of us know how to do that on Zoom now, but uh, how many of us have actually prepared a poster? So it's one hand being up to, okay, good. All right, so a few of us have prepared a poster. I'll try to make it as interesting as possible. And I said, if you do actually have any questions, just uh, just uh, uh, shout out, it's absolutely fine. Um, and then then after after maybe, uh, so it's not a long presentation, um, I'll try to finish as quickly as, as I can. And after that, we can, uh, we can give it a go, uh, even if it is going to be an incomplete poster, it's absolutely fine as long as we have had some sort of practice. So I'll try to share my screen and then we'll get going from there. All right, I hope that you can see my screen. Because as promised, I have only 18 slides. So I'm definitely not going to take, uh, take really long. Um, uh, and uh, once again, as I said, please shout out if you have any questions whilst I'm, I'm um, speaking. All right, so I think, <clears throat> The task for today is basically to uh, to go through um, the, the preparation of uh, academic poster um, and how to prepare uh, the poster. That's the most important thing. Why to prepare? We'll try to tackle those uh, questions really um, briefly as well. So my name is Vivek Trivedi. Uh, I um, teach pharmaceutics in the School of Pharmacy, and as uh, Yvonne very kindly um, uh, sort of mentioned, uh, that I uh, my research is around. Uh, uh, looking at solubility improvement of uh, poorly soluble drugs um, and, and also uh, looking at non-invasive delivery of uh, <coughs> biomolecules. So I'm from the University of Kent um, uh, Yvonne will, uh, will have my contact details. So if you do want to get in touch with me afterwards, that's absolutely fine. All right, so, so I think the first question is why to prepare a poster? Uh, and uh, if you are a young academic or young researcher, uh, then one of the issues what, what you would have is uh, a lot of old people like uh, like me or others would take up uh, most of the oral presentation slots. So in a, in a conference or in a meeting, you have only two ways of presenting your exciting work. It's either you, you do an oral presentation or you do a poster presentation. Um, and because a lot of uh, most of the uh, oral presentation slots are taken up by a so-called in inverted comma, more experienced people, uh, early, early on in your career, uh, uh, sort of a preparation of a poster and presenting uh, or standing in front of your poster to prepare uh, to uh, to showcase your exciting work is uh, sometimes the only option you have. So, so it's it's a good way of uh, uh, showing uh, the, the scientific community, the wider scientific community, as to what you had been doing. 
Um, so, uh, so it's if you can get a uh, uh, get to do a, uh, an oral presentation, that's absolutely brilliant. If you don't, then then this gives you sometimes actually doing a poster presentation is a is a better option because uh, you may be able to uh, stay there with the poster for longer periods of time. A lot of people will walk around um, and and uh, will try to probably catch your eyes um, and have a discussion on your um, on your poster. It if you prepare a uh, really nice poster, then it allows you to summarize your project really well. Um, and that uh, then gives you an opportunity to discuss your work with uh, with with uh, n number of different uh, scientists present in a in a meeting. Um, so this is why we should prepare a poster uh, um, because uh, I mean uh, I, I have had PhD students who used to get disheartened when um, they had applied for an oral presentation slot and they didn't get oral presentation slot uh, and they had to prepare a poster. But I think it is still. Uh, a very good opportunity um, to uh, to showcase your work, and your poster hangs there for a, for a considerably long period of time. So, uh, in, in, uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, it can actually um, uh, be seen by even larger number of people than uh, than the people who may be attending your particular talk. Because if you, for example, if you're in a large conference and there are parallel sessions running, uh, some people uh, may uh, may prefer to attend some other talk. Um, uh, and they may not come to your talk, but if there's a poster, they can always go and have a look at it. So in general, what happens is you have a, um, you have a poster uh, 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 and there'll be devoted poster sessions during the tea time or during the lunch time, a tea breaks or lunch time uh, in, a, in a conference. People will walk around. Uh, you are expected to present, uh, to uh, stand in, next to your poster as well dressed as possible, obviously. Looking very smart and, and professional. Uh, and uh, um, and then um, you uh, sort of uh, some somebody who comes along, they look at your poster, uh, they uh, they find the content in, content interesting, so they stop by and start talk, chatting uh, with you. And you never know, uh, one of these people who talk to you may become a prospective employer if you're not already employed. Um, so as a young researcher, there are plenty of advantages of presenting a poster. Um, because uh, people will just, uh, just, they'll just be giving you a quick glance to your poster. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's very important that you prepare your uh, poster in such a way that it attracts, attracts um, people's attention. So everything has to be clearly laid out. Um, uh, it, and uh, um, uh, if, uh, it doesn't look like as if you sort of put everything together in one place without giving it any thought. So. <clears throat> Using one of the older uh, sort of uh, uh, posters uh, to as a as a starting point may not be a bad place to uh, to be, but it's always use uh, it's good to use your own um, sort of creative instincts to prepare your poster as well as possible. So, what would a, a poster generally include? Uh, like you would write an abstract, as uh, uh, Yvonne mentioned, that you have already already some of you who uh, attended previous sessions. I've already had a chance to write an abstract. Uh, you would, um, as you would write in abstract, um, sort of summary of your work, poster is once again, a uh, summary of your research work um, in a sort of one page. Uh, a page is, it, the page you're going to present is rather large, but it's just one page summary after all. So what, what you would uh, include in a poster is, uh, are all those things what you would have included in abstract. So your title, uh, which should be very clearly laid out. Who are the authors and who is the corresponding author? Uh, who, who are you? And some people would uh, like to um, uh, also uh, uh, attach a, uh, uh, a, sort of a, a photograph of, of the presenting author. Uh, you could do that too, so then people can recognize you. Uh, so if you're not next to your poster, they know uh, the face and they can find you if they find something interesting and they want to discuss that with you. Uh, your company logo, so the university or company where you are working, um, so you, uh, it's important to acknowledge them as well, so they know which company or uh, university you are associated with. And then after that, even when you write an abstract, within an abstract, you write an, uh, a short abstract. So uh, it's the same same uh, rules apply in the poster as well. So you write an abstract, you introduce the topic, uh, you have your experimental or mater materials and methods section, you move on to results section, um, conclude your findings, uh, uh, mention any references you might have used in the preparation of the poster, 
and then acknowledge anyone who might have had not a uh, sort of significant amount of input into, into this research work, but they might have done something which is worth acknowledging. So it's not a lot different to uh, the abstract, um, what you learned to write in the previous uh, uh, sessions. Now, I think uh, um, when it comes to uh, preparing a poster, it's worth keeping in mind that uh, um, you could write pages or half a poster maybe full of introduction, but that's not what people are interested in. People are not going to read your poster from top to bottom. That's worth always worth keeping in mind. And so you, you must, spend, uh, so as I said, use your creative instincts and also make sure that most of your poster is a combination of uh, the sec uh, experimental results and conclusion, sec conclusion, conclusion sections. And once again, use uh, things which, are, which can be spotted very easily. So it could be a, it could be a table, it could be a diagram. Uh, if you write too much text on the, on the poster, I think it's always worth remembering whenever you start preparing a poster that no one, and when I say no one, I literally mean no one is ever going to read your poster from top to bottom. So if you keep, uh, if you write an essay on the poster, it's never going to be an attractive poster and you're never going to attract audience. And that's what you are there for. You want to showcase your work, your hard work, what you had, been, uh, you had put in um, and, uh, and you are in a conference to, uh, to very enthusiastically to present that work. Uh, but if you if you uh, do a really bad job with poster, there's a lot of writing on the on a on a poster. Then people are not going to be attracted towards that poster. So what you want to do is present your results as effectively and as a, a, um, in an attractive manner as possible. So use figures, use flowcharts, use diagrams, uh, wherever you can. So be as creative as possible. Um, uh, when you so these these are the usual elements of any scientific writing. Um, so whether you write in an abstract, whether you write in a, a manuscript. For publication, or whether you're preparing a poster, the rules are pretty much the same. The basic content, uh, or the basic sections and subsections in a in a poster, are exactly the same as uh, um, as they'd be for uh, any other types of scientific publication. So uh, now we know why 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 to prepare a poster, um, and we also know what to include in a poster. But I think uh, the question then comes: Well, I've got a blank page in front of me. Where should I start? And it's quite handy that you have already done um, uh, an abstract writing workshop before this, uh, because if you are going to present a poster in a, in a conference, then you would have submitted an abstract to that conference. And, and the, the organizers would have selected your abstract out of however many uh, submitted abstracts. So I think you've, you've already uh, uh, being quite, uh, if, if you have been invited to uh, submit a, a, a poster or uh, present your poster in a, in, a, in a conference, that means you've actually done well already anyway, because your abstract is, uh, uh, is accepted. And obviously, the bigger the conference, more prestigious the conference, so the more the brownie points you gain uh, when you accept, uh, when your uh, abstract is accepted. Anyway, so you have written an abstract, um, you've submitted that to the conference organizers, uh, now you have got an acceptance email, um, and they want you to uh, 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 to present a poster in the conference. So where do you start? I mean, the best thing, best place to start is look at your abstract, and uh, and uh, the, whatever content you have in abstract, you basically then start putting that in a in the in the poster format. Uh, believe me, uh, most of the times the content you have in your abstract may be sufficient to fill up the space on a poster because everything has to be enlarged, obviously. And, and, the, and then once again, you, uh, you go to use figures and diagrams and uh, flowcharts and uh, uh, tables, et cetera. So <clears throat> the content on, a, uh, on your abstract, uh, different conferences would ex uh, expect different types of abstracts, but usually you would have one or two figures or diagrams in your abstract as well. So the content you may have on your abstract may be sufficient to at least do 50, 60, 70% of your poster, if not all of it. So the content of your abstract is the best starting point. And that means that you, you are not sort of, uh, would be staring at a blank paper for, for a very long period of time. You know how to uh, start. You can directly obviously take the, uh, the fixed information out. Um, so you have submitted an abstract. You, you can't change the title now. You, you have told the organizers your abstract is uh, accepted on the basis of the information you have provided on, the, on uh, that abstract. 
Um, so you can't change the title. So the lift, the things what you can lift without thinking about it are the uh, title and the author details, um, 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 if, not, if uh, nothing else, right? So that, that can directly be lifted, lifted from, the, um, from the abstract. And I think it's, it's also worth keeping in mind that uh, you mustn't change, try to change the title of your uh, poster uh, once you have had your abstract accepted. Uh, the organizers would not appreciate that. So, um, so we have done that. Uh, now we have a sort of a, uh, we know uh, where to start um, and that's great. Um, and if you had uh, a chance, if the uh, conference wanted you to submit a couple of pages long abstract, which happens, some conferences will ask you to only submit half a page. Some conferences will ask you to submit a couple of pages. Uh, if you've written a sort of long abstract, which is a couple of pages long, then you can, you can pick out a lot of information from, uh, from the abstract itself. It's already peer reviewed in certain ways. Um, you should be able to pick up the abstract, the method section, uh, even the results and discussion what you have had, uh, what you would have written in that in, in a big abstract. Two pages of abstract is absolutely brilliant for, for designing a poster. You don't really need to look anywhere else. So um, hopefully uh, uh, by now you appreciate the sort of importance of a poster. So hopefully it doesn't look as if uh, well, it's, it's a waste of time. Uh, and you also know where to start um, and uh, and how to uh, sort of uh, um, organize yourself before you start preparing the poster. Now, if you've ever if you've never prepared a poster, uh, then there are certain guidelines what you could follow on uh, on PowerPoint. So, I, pre I appreciate that this is an older version of PowerPoint, and the reason why I actually kept this is because a lot of us are still using older version of PowerPoint. I've got a YouTube link at the very end of this presentation where uh, the uh, author of that, uh, uh, that video uh, is, uh, was talking about, uh, has basically done the whole thing, uh, but on a newer version of uh, MS PowerPoint. So you can refer to that. The rules don't change. It's exactly the same. The, the ribbon is the same. The, uh, uh, the buttons are still the same on, uh, on uh, newer PowerPoint in comparison to the last version of the PowerPoint. It's not very old. It's the last uh, previous version of the PowerPoint. And, uh, um, so uh, if you follow the directions, then you should still be able to do that, uh, whichever version of uh, PowerPoint you have. Right, so we are preparing. So we've decided that we're going to, so um, uh, there are many other softwares you could use to prepare a poster, uh, but one of the most common version, common software you would use or I would still use is PowerPoint. It's just because I'm, I'm very familiar with the software. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to, Work on this, I and mean, you may you may decide to use another software. Um, right. Uh, so, so uh, the first thing first, we open um, the PowerPoint. Uh, we've got a blank slide. When you've uh, got the blank slide. It will come up with uh, uh, with sort of a uh, oops, bear with me. So it it'll come up with a click to add title and uh, these uh, 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 text boxes on on the slide. Uh, select everything, delete everything, so you have a blank slide, and that's where we start. Um, and then after that, uh, you if you have been to a conference and if you have seen a poster, obviously the poster uh, what you've seen in the conferences they are not a slide size poster; they are much bigger, uh, and usually. There are a zero size, size posters. So we want uh, to adjust the size of our slide, right? So then when we finally print uh, our poster, it comes out to the size of what we want it to, uh, want it to be uh, according to expectation of the conference organizers. You can, uh, conferences can ask you to, to prepare posters in, oh, my mouse is being overly enthusiastic. So, um, Conferences may ask you to prepare posters in, in uh, A0 size or A1 size, uh, but most commonly uh, the posters are presented in A0 size. Um, so that's, ba that's basically 84 by 118.9 centimeter. Uh, so that's height uh, uh, and width, uh, or 33.1 to 46.8 mm. inches. It starts to show um, that the, the room. So, um, so the first thing first, we've uh, opened the slide and we've got a 
brand new spanking, uh, brand spanking new slide. Uh, and now uh, we have deleted everything uh, uh, we had on the slide. And now we have adjust, we are just going to adjust the size of it. So if you click on the, on the menu of, uh, um, of the uh, PowerPoint uh, uh, or find the page setup, uh, so it, it, could, it is slightly different on the newer version of, uh, uh, of the PowerPoint. But once again, we have to go to design and then look at uh, the, uh, the page setup option. Uh, click on page setup option and then choose a uh, custom. Uh, so you will have uh, uh, so, uh, pre-listed options of A4, A5, et cetera. Go for custom option and then enter the size for uh, A0 poster. So the height of our A0 uh, uh, poster is 118.9 centimeters and the width of our uh, A0 poster is 84 centimeters. Uh, and we just need, to, uh, just need one slide. So, so you can have number of slides uh, uh, I mean, you should have just one slide anyway. Uh, and then when it, it says where I, where, uh, how many slides you want of this size, uh, you just say, well, numbers, uh, you start from the number one slide. Uh, once you have entered those numbers, um, it, uh, uh, the page will automatically sort of, uh, become a portrait instead of landscape. Uh, most of the uh, posters are uh, uh, portraits. Uh, you can also prepare posters in landscape uh, but usually you will see uh, in, uh, see posters to be in a, uh, in a sort of portrait uh, and the, in a zero size. And once again, the posters can be in, uh, they come in, they can come in various uh, sizes. Conferences can would tell you which size they want. But there's a there's a table to refer to, and this is obviously all very easily available on um, uh, on internet. Right. So once we have done that, uh, we uh, need to now we have got a blank page. Um, I've noticed that I've still not deleted my uh, 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 my uh, text boxes from here. Yeah, hello, uh, sir. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, in fact, we, the, the screen you are sharing is it, appearing very small on, on, on our screen. We are seeing your image uh, to reverse it. I have no idea why that is happening. Just bear with me. Oh, okay. Okay. Because uh, I I don't I have just one screen in front of me, so that shouldn't happen. Um, uh, it, it is uh, anyone else having the same problem? Yes, we also see uh, the please, same. Please, I missed the detail of what the problem is. They can see a very but, small screen, apparently. The, the, what, what I'm seeing on my screen, the slide he's sharing is, is appearing smaller than his image. Uh, I think, I don't know whether it's my machine or it's a general problem, but somebody has also confirmed from his end that he's seeing the same thing. We, we are actually expecting the slide to be bigger than uh, the image. Okay, I think so that's it. Uh, yes, I think it's because you have double click on the image and you will get it in the size that is is good. Double click on your image, okay? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, okay, good. I'm glad it's sorted. Okay, so we've got a blank slide now. We have adjusted the size to what we want. Um, so in this case, we're preparing an A0 size uh, uh, poster. Uh, and obviously now we have, we have, so if you look in the uh, previous slide, it's a white background uh, that never sort of is very attractive. Remember, we want to present, this is a marketing material in some ways. So we want to prepare uh, this slide to be as flashy, uh, not uh, sort of unprofessionally flashy, but uh, flashy, as flashy as possible to make sure that it attracts attention. So we can then choose the background color. So we have, uh, uh, we have our slide. We go to design, we look at background styles. So here, if you can see my cursor and we want to uh, change the background color. You can choose whatever color you look, you wanted to, but just be smart because if you have a background color, which is dark, and if you have, a, if you're planning to use dark font, then it's not a very intelligent choice uh, because the, the, the fonts would actually be hidden um, in, in the sort of dark background. So you, you have to adjust 
the, the type of uh, uh, the, the background color and also the font color. So we'll get to the font color later on, but it's, it's just making sure that everything is legible. And once again, if you use dark background, it's always good to use light uh, font because then that uh, sort of reflects very easily, that, that improves the readability. And um, so use the dark, dark background by all means. Uh, use some, uh, you can use one uh, tone, you can use uh, double tone, you can use uh, numerous tones, but once again, just make sure that it doesn't look ridiculous. We're not making a hip hop video here. We're making uh, um, an academic poster and that's worth, so it has to be, it has to look beautiful, but it has to be also kind of within those professional um, boundaries. So, uh, so, we, uh, so uh, yeah, create a, uh, um, a, a slide, adjust the size, adjust the background, choose your favorite color, uh, but always make sure that that color is not going to be sort of hiding all other things what you're going to add on top. So you'll also be adding a lot of uh, your figures and diagrams and so on and so forth afterwards when you start uh, populating your, um, your poster and none of that should, should, uh, should be uh, hidden in that background. Your background must help to lift up all, these inf all the other information what you're going to add onto, onto the slide. That's, that's worth always keeping in mind. Hopefully you're following the, uh, the step-by-step -step guide, so to speak, uh, on how to prepare a poster as well on PowerPoint, okay? So now we know how to, uh, we know how to open a PowerPoint, obviously, uh, but we also know how to uh, adjust the size of, uh, of, uh, of the slide. Uh, we also know the size of the poster we are, we are interested in, and now we have chosen a particular background color. Now moving on, uh, what we have, what we need to do, so I've, I've taken the background off for now, but now uh, we want to add uh, information on our poster. So first thing first, uh, as I said, take copy the title from your abstract and we have to, we know that we have to, uh, we can't change the title, we should stick to the same title uh, because that's the title of the abstract which, is, which has been accepted by the um, organizing committee of a conference. So <clears throat> we, lift, we copy that title from your Word document and we're ready to sort of start get a get it get going. Um, when it comes to the font sizes, that's equally important. So remember, everything what you write on the poster should be easily re readable from a one meter distance, if not uh, from even further back, at least from one meter. So uh, so the, you can't use very small font sizes. So uh, especially when you and title is the first thing what people will look at. So make your title as big as possible, but not don't cover half of your poster with the title. Obviously. So uh, usually in an A0 size poster, you would go for something like hundred points um, uh, for the uh, for the uh, title, and um, so it's big enough for people to uh, to read it very uh, very easily and not very scary. Then uh, we have to add other things so for further sections and subsections and so on and so forth. Uh, don't go below twenty four points. Uh, have, be between 24 to 36 points to prepare uh, to write the embed the text. Uh, you can have slightly uh, bigger font sizes for the headings uh, uh, and slightly smaller font sizes for the content under those headings, uh, but do not go below 24 uh, points. You have you must uh, uh, somehow uh, so fit everything in one slide using these very simple rules. 100, font, uh, 100, point, 100 uh, font size for the title, and then uh, font size is between 24 to 36. As high as you can go from 24, it's better because once again, that improves the readability. Uh, and you can have slightly higher uh, font size for the titles and subtitles, uh, and slightly lower font size for the, um, for the content under those titles. So now we start slowly um, uh, building our poster. So first thing first, we know that uh, uh, what the title of the poster is, the poster title of the poster goes on top. So to evaluate X, Y, Z, to uh, ev evaluate the efficiency of uh, anti-malarial vaccine um, in Ghanaian population, for example, or something of that sort, like whatever, the, whatever your research is. Um, so um, so our, our, our title is gone. Now, uh, remember one something else what I said that uh, we must, um, also, uh, remember to acknowledge the source. Uh, let me just finish this, uh, uh, Dakwa, and then, uh, then I'll get to you. Um, so, uh, 
you can also then now attach or um, paste uh, the company logos on either side of your title if you have space. Okay, so you can have you can do that on top. You can do that on bottom. You mustn't ever, uh, as the rule usually goes, you mustn't ever um, uh, embed the title of uh, sorry the the logo of your company in the middle of a post. There. So it's it's usually it's on top or it's on bottom. Um, so you, what you're doing is you're marketing yourself, you're marketing your research, and you're marketing the organization where you come from. And you can also, if you're going to stick your photograph, it's preferable. People will also uh, have you uh, have their photographs at the bottom of the poster. But if you are going to stick uh, the photograph of yours, then go on top because people start from the top. Uh, so sometimes sticking the photograph at the bottom is really not that useful. So uh, a photograph should go on top as well. Yes, go on, Dakwa. Uh, you wanted to ask the question, I guess. I'm sorry to say it wasn't deliberate. Um, ah, okay, right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so I hope that uh, um, things are clear um, so far as to what we're going to do. And now it's it's basically uh, just keep adding the text boxes. Um, so go in, uh, in uh, so in the older version or the previous version of uh, uh, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, uh, in the ribbon, uh, you basically go into the insert ribbon, uh, which is which is actually it still stands for the newer version of uh, uh, PowerPoint as well, find the text box, uh, draw text boxes onto, uh, onto your slide and start making um, uh, your poster. Now, different people have different ways of doing things. Some, some people will divide the poster in the middle. Uh, so they have two halves of the, half, halves of the poster. Um, some people will have just separate text boxes uh, written uh, where they'll write different uh, bits and pieces of information and then arrange those text boxes to make sure they, uh, they, are, they all look um, so beautiful. It's entirely up to you. It's literally, it's a blank piece of paper which you, you can design in whichever way you want, as long as it looks, uh, it looks professional and it looks like something which is going to grab attention of the potential um, readers. Okay, something else uh, keep in mind that if you look at the very bottom here, uh, you can see because remember this page is quite quite a large page. It's it's a zero size page. So I, when you're working, you'd work you'd be working at 10, 15 percent of the zoom. So you basically aren't looking at the full size of the uh, of the slide. When you prepare a presentation, the size of the slide you see on the screen is the size of the slide. But when you're preparing a, a zero size poster, it's uh, the, what you see in front of you. It's only 10 percent or 15 percent of the actual size. That's important because every now and then you should keep zooming uh, it to 100, zooming it up to 100 percent to make sure that there aren't a lot of gaps, uh, there aren't a lot of blank spaces uh, between two sections, two subsections between the figure and the text, etc. Because those spaces will uh, become a lot bigger when you would print the poster, and it will make your poster look very or not very attractive. So uh, we have uh, uh, so far so, uh, opened a new slide. Adjusted the size of the poster. Uh, the, uh, adjusted the size of the slide to uh, to create a poster of the size what uh, your um, conference organizers want. Um, we have added the title. The author details go underneath uh, the title um, of uh, of the poster. Uh, you're going to uh, stick uh, the company logo, your photograph if you wanted to, on top, uh, uh, either on uh, either on both sides of the poster, uh, uh, poster if you wanted to. So you, you can have a, a company logo on both sides, or you can have just on one side and your photograph on top if you're going to attach, uh, stick a photograph of yours on the poster. Here, uh, the, just under uh, which uh, I haven't, I did not write anything here, but underneath uh, the uh, the title, you will write all the details of your author, uh, of the author or authors. Usually when we're doing scientific work, it's never one person who has actually done the work. So you will write, you, there'll be three or four or five different authors of this particular um, piece of work which you are uh, presenting in the conference. Write that uh, and then uh, clearly indicate who is the presenting author or who is the corresponding author. Uh, and it's usually you who you're presenting there. So you write your detail, you write your uh, email address, for example. You can have your professor's email address, which you could leave there because they are going to hang around in, in an organization for far longer than you are. Once you've done your PhDs or master's uh, uh, studies, you would, you would move on. Uh, but uh, 
it's, it, it's up to you who uh, whose uh, a contact details you want to present, but they go just under the the title. Um, so from here on, it's it's quite a sort of a uh, free. It, you it, they, people will give you all sorts of instructions as to how you should arrange your poster and so on and so forth. I usually like to just leave it to uh, the students and let them be as creative as they can. Um, so insert text boxes, insert diagrams, insert uh, flow charts. Um, just the, the only little, uh, so, uh, as I've said quite a few times, the one thing which is worth always keeping in mind is never ever write too much on the poster. Always remember that people are going to spend a few seconds, not even a minute or two, on your uh, on your poster, uh, and then they'll decide whether uh, your poster is worthy of their attention or not. So, uh, so writing uh, it may be the best thing you would have written on the poster, but no one is going to read it. So don't waste your energy in sort of uh, writing a lot of uh, uh, writing a lot of text on a poster. Uh, use figures, diagrams, make things which you think are important. Uh, as um, uh, sort of as focused as possible, uh, make them bold, make them in italics, uh, underline them or whatever uh, it is, have them in different color. Uh, um, uh, and uh, one thing I did not uh, must also mention that when it comes to scientific writing, we are very boring people. We're not very, so not the most exciting people on the planet. So when you're choosing your font, don't go very uh, fancy. Stick to the simple font sizes what people use. So it, it could be, I mean, Times New Roman is still the best accepted font uh, around. Most boring font, but Times New Roman uh, is the font which you should go for. Or uh, you can you can uh, have Arial or you can have uh, uh, Calibri, but don't go uh, uh, for anything which looks uh, uh, very uh, nice, but that's not going to be very attractive uh, to the scientific community. So we still accept expect a uh, little bit of dullness when it comes to uh, preparing a poster. So be creative, be sensible, uh, and always remember that this is an academic poster. Uh, and as I said earlier on, it's not a hip hop video. Um, so nothing needs to look flashy. Uh, everything uh, must deliver a message. So we've done that. Uh, and then uh, you can um, add further uh, effects. Uh, on, onto the diagrams you have, so you could uh, uh, so, uh, make them as a feudal uh, 3D, for example. They can, you can actually so can tilt them. You can uh, do do whatever you like with those figures, really, as long as they uh, it just makes them uh, stand out. Oops. Oh my goodness! All right, let's go back. Uh, go back to that. So we've got. Hopefully, you've got a basic. Uh, um, knowledge of how to prepare a poster on a PowerPoint. But that's where I'm going to stop because once you have gone this far, you should know what we have to do uh, to, to populate the poster anyway. So uh, just to kind of summarize, um, we have created a slide. We have adjusted the size of the slide uh, according to the requirement of the of the conference organizers, we've populated it with content, uh, not just text, but text and images. More images, the better. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, well, you have to have a balance between them, but, but, but more images are always better. Um, and uh, that make sure that uh, the little things after the, afterwards, make sure that your, all your text boxes and images are formatted properly. So they're aligned in whichever way you want them to be uh, aligned. So they're not sort of one thing is not sitting here and another one is sitting here. And then there's a gap in between here. So there's nothing here. So you try to minim minimize <laughs> empty spaces as much as possible. Those empty spaces will uh, become absolutely huge on an A0 printout and it will not look good. It will, not, it will look rather unprofessional. So they must not look all over the place. Uh, they must be al aligned with each other uniformly. Ensure that you have uh, not left huge blank spaces as we uh, spoke about already. Um, and uh, and uh, remember when I was saying that when you're working um, uh, on, on your screen, uh, you'd be working, uh, you'll, ju you'll just be uh, sort of uh, zooming in, or zooming out rather, uh, and you'll be working uh, uh, not at 100% of the size of the poster. So uh, zoom your poster to 100% every now and then, check 
that blank spaces are not going to look, uh, look uh, make your uh, make your poster look ugly. You'd be spending quite a lot of time preparing this poster to make sure that the little things don't spoil it. So don't wait until the last minute when you print it out and then you think, oh no, look at this space. I should have actually uh, put something in here. Um, and the best way of sort of filling a lot of spaces is uh, is with figures, um, is with uh, 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 flowcharts, etc. So, for example, the easiest thing to do is when you write in a method. Uh, if you if you think that method should be written uh, with some detail in your poster, instead of writing that in text, uh, use a flowchart, right? So you would, uh, whenever we're doing something, we, we do that in uh, in stepwise manner. It, it doesn't matter what sort of work you're doing. Maybe just uh, instead of uh, sort of writing uh, uh, bullet points, use a, uh, a flowchart to do that. And in that case, it looks like uh, the, that you've got a figure, not a uh, not just text. Uh, and it, it also makes uh, things um, uh, lift up a little bit. So, uh, so yeah. So use as many figures as you can. Be creative uh, when you're writing your poster. It's a it's a brilliant experience actually to uh, to do that. All right, so uh, uh, we've done all of that, and uh, some things I've not covered. Uh, some things I've covered, uh, but I just want to show you some some examples. And um, so uh, here is a here's a simple example of a poster which I lifted from internet, um, from University of Bangor uh, and Cardiff University in the UK, on the use of uh, a cordotomy. Um, and uh, um, this is what I pretty much what we were talking about. So what we have here is the structure we just spoke of. So this is an A0 size poster, okay? You've got your title. The title is in quite big font size because that's the first thing what people are going to look at. Now, in this case, you might have noticed that there is no uh, university information or uh, sponsorship information or the uh, organizational information on top. Absolutely fine. You can move that in any which way you want it to. Um, so now these guys have gone for not, they don't have a background uh, as such. They've got a, sort of a, a human body or the um, bust of a human uh, uh, in the uh, background, uh, but the poster is white in color. They've got some uh, sort of designs on top and bottom. So you, once again, you're free to do that if you wanted to. Now, uh, what they have done, so they've, they've got a, a title, then you have got your author names at, uh, at the bottom. Uh, and you can see the difference in the, in the font sizes uh, between uh, the title and the author names. There are affiliations. So you can see one, two, and three. These, 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 all of these guys are not from the same institution or maybe not from the same department, even if they are from the same university. So, uh, so you uh, subscript um, uh, uh, these ones, twos, and threes. Um, and, and then at the bottom, you write their affiliation as to where they are from. The one thing which is missing here is who is the corresponding author. But they, they have got a contact detail at the bottom. So that's the, once again, it's it's quite a sort of you can pre prepare your poster in whichever way you fancy once you know the basics. So you can have this on top. And I, if I'm preparing a poster, I'd prefer this to be on top, uh, so people uh, have the contact details as uh, as quickly as they, they look at the title and where I'm from. Um, I I would have used some space. Uh, the space here and here to maybe in this case they have quite a lot of different uh, organizations which are part of this particular piece of work and that's why they might have decided not to uh, uh, to have any uh, information on the organization on top but you can always uh, if you have just one or two universities uh, involved in the work then you can have uh, you could use this blank space here to uh, uh, to tell people where you are, where do you uh, where you coming from. Now uh, we can you can then look at the section. So you've got background, uh, which could be uh, uh, which is basically just a very brief introduction, so to speak. Um, and some, some, sometimes you can actually have an abstract, and then you can uh, have a brief introduction afterwards as well. They have gone very bullet uh, bullet point heavy, so they have got bullet points everywhere. It's absolutely fine to use bullet points, but then sometimes you can overdo on bullet points as well. So be careful that you, that's uh, uh, that you're not that's of a um, I do apologize with my oversensitive mouse. Um, so, uh, so uh, something else. What you can so I call I call this uh, an okay poster uh, because you see here 
there's a space which we could have used. Uh, and if you're talking about background, always you can write another one or two sentences to fill up this space. That's, that's just not right. However, you can see that this poster, so everything is kind of aligned quite nicely. So the size of uh, this text box, size of that text box, all, all of these, at least the height of these text boxes are, are uniform all throughout. These two are of the same length. This is of the same, these two are of the same length. Um, and then uh, method, as I was saying earlier on, don't write a boarding method in bullet points. Do a step, do a flow chart. They've, they've done exactly that. Um, they've uh, made a flow chart of that. Uh, they've, uh, they've got aims. Uh, and, then, and then finally, if you see, more than half of the poster is basically results. Uh, and uh, and that's, that's probably the best thing to do. Uh, because that's what people are interested in. Everything else they can talk about, they can, anybody who's going to come to talk to you, they would already know something about the topic uh, you have prepared your poster on. So don't spend a lot of time uh, for, uh, introducing the whole thing. Spend as much time in telling people what great achievements you have made. So present your results, present as much of your results as possible. So include your findings at the end as well. So you, you have, uh, you see that here, uh, in, in this particular poster, they don't have conclusion or uh, references. Uh, you should do that for your poster. Um, uh, so you have a, so two lines on a uh, conclusion uh, and uh, uh, very brief uh, references, even if they're going to be in a very uh, small font size. So for references, you can have small font size. For, uh, for the affiliation, you can have font, as font sizes smaller than 24, but everything else stick to font sizes 24 and above. Uh, so this is I, this is a, a, an example of a um, of an okay poster, and I've got an example of a bad poster, uh, and all the things we had been talking about so far as to why when a poster is a bad poster, it contains all those uh, bad points. First, uh, the title is exceptionally long. Uh, once again, always remember that no one is ever going to read everything you have written on. The so if that includes your title. So if you have an exceptionally long uh, title, no one is going to read that, okay? So they'll get bored. They'll read the first five, six, seven, seven words and they'll say, well, it's, uh, I'll, I'll go somewhere else. Then there, there, are, um, uh, I, there are no details of who actually has written this poster, where this poster is from, um, uh, and, and, there's a, uh, and uh, there's information, sorry, there's information on the authors here. It's way too small. I can't, I can't actually see that. The text, is, this is actually absolutely full of text. That's not how you present the poster. The figures you have, uh, they have presented, they are of really bad quality, uh, which will look very bad. With, uh, I mean, they look bad on the screen, but if they would have printed it uh, on A0 size, then it would have looked even worse. Uh, there are no, uh, so look at the gaps, this blank space here, the blank space is everywhere. These are just, this is just not a good poster. A lot of these things they could have sorted out. For example, they could have just uh, made this figure bigger. These, these figures could have uh, made slightly bigger. These figures would have just filled the space. So just uh, uh, looking at these simple things, making sure that, uh, uh, that, uh, that there are not a lot of blank spaces and there's not a lot of writing. This kind of writing is definitely, definitely not good. You must avoid this. So you need something which is an improvement um, to, uh, so this is very clear. A lot of things are very easy to, uh, to read. And this is a very bad poster because there's barely anything which, which is uh, uh, legible. Okay, so that's the bad poster. So I'm pretty much done. So I, I think I've uh, spent quite a lot of time shouting about how to prepare the poster. Hopefully that gives you an idea as to how to do it. Uh, is, uh, as, uh, at least how to make a start. As Yvonne said earlier on that I had already sent a couple of abstracts uh, and I'm guessing you would be uh, sort of, uh, uh, divided into different groups and uh, you'll have an opportunity to spend half an hour or so, uh, so to prepare or give it a go, prepare a poster, see what it looks like. Uh, I've given you an abstract, uh, which I very long time ago, I prepared a poster on that abstract, I think. I, I have that poster somewhere, so I'll, I'll show you the poster uh, when we come back after, after you have had a go. Anyway, let's just summarize whatever we have uh, discussed so far. Um, um, so academic posters are a good way to showcase what you have been doing. 
show the pride in your work. Uh, so if you are very happy with what you have done and achieved, then uh, show that uh, enthusiasm on your poster as well. Don't be ridiculous, but be enthusiastic. Uh, prepare your poster in advance. Uh, make sure that uh, your poster is clearly formatted. Uh, so it, it is easily read from at least a meter, uh, if not from further back, uh, because people, people would give it a glance and something has to come uh, to sort of attract them to come closer to you and start talking to you. And then once you actually prepared your poster, uh, you would do that on, a, on, a, on the PowerPoint. Uh, and once you're happy with your poster, save that poster in PDF. <laughs> It's very important that you save your poster in PDF because once you open, uh, if you move from one version of the PowerPoint to another version of the PowerPoint, the formatting will change. So if you were to take it to a different place for printing and you take it as a PowerPoint, that may move uh, your text boxes uh, here and there. And that's not, that's not, that, that's the last thing you want when you just want to get it printed and get ready for, for, uh, for a presentation. So prepare your poster, when you're happy with it, save it as a PDF. Uh, and then just sort of try to guess what sort of questions people will ask you. And most of the times it's uh, uh, people, uh, the questions are on the explanation of something. Uh, so you might have presented something and they want to, uh, then you want to ask you, uh, can you tell me more? So you should be very uh, familiar with the, uh, the work you have presented in your poster. So prepare for it. I know everything about uh, you have presented um, uh, on uh, everything about each and every word you have presented uh, on the poster. People could actually ask a question on that. For poster presentation, obviously, this is a more of a uh, curiosity. Anybody who comes close to you, uh, it's not an interrogation. People are not going to interrogate you. They just want to know a bit more because they're interested in your work. So, so if you have practiced your uh, uh, your poster or the con you're very familiar with the content of your poster, you shouldn't have any problems. Okay, so and I'll, I'll send this, um, uh, so uh, as, as I was saying earlier on, uh, I've got this uh, rather brilliant YouTube link, uh, which I'll um, uh, send or share with Yvonne, uh, who would share that with you as well. Uh, and also um, a paper, um, which I'm happy to uh, share, uh, which should read, uh, and it, it it should it'll give you a good enough idea as to how to prepare the best possible paper you can. Uh, on the YouTube link here, so this is an embedded uh, video on the PowerPoint. You can see in the background as well how uh, uh, the choice of the colors, the choice of the font, how it is not full of text, uh, how you can uh, everything is gonna. This is a summary, this is uh, the method and the data, the pictures, the diagrams, and so on and so forth. So this is what we were talking about when you prepare your poster. Okay, so I'm not going to play that video, but uh, give you an opportunity to ask many questions before we uh, give, it, give, give, a, give uh, it a go ourselves. Do you guys have any questions? I suppose we are having to go to give to um, give ourselves. Yvonne, you're breaking up again. <laughs> Apologies. I was just saying that what he wants to give give it a go. Yeah. So I think you have already. Uh, uh, have the abstracts um, so you can, um, it's up to you how you would like to divide that. Um, yes, so we, we have, thank you so much. Thank you so much Vivek for your presentation. And um, uh, so we have, we'll have four groups and in those four groups, the groups with odd numbers, that is group one and two, will take, I, I believe everybody has um, the two abstracts. So the groups one and two will take evaluation of super critical fluid technology. Uh, 
Um, with the rest of the title and groups. Um, sorry, groups one and three world technologies and groups two and four, um, yes. And we will go, there are sufficient, there is put the poster together just present afterwards and then we can it came up with. If there are some places that maybe you would put a text box and add something, something which is not on the poster and you would put it in the which is not in the abstract and you would the text box there and identify what you would and hopefully we can put that together. We'll be coming from room to room to uh, provide some support if necessary and we'll be back in 25 minutes. Please.
ethnic group that is ready um, to give their presentation, you tell us, just uh, present to us, show us what you did, and um, let's just enjoy. So we are group three, is it? Hello. Yeah, group three. Yes, I think so. Uh, group three. Three. So I, I, I will, with your permission, I'll share what we did, and then maybe the colleagues will also explain why we did what we did. But this is what we did within the time that we had. There are a few white spaces, but it's just because we did not get enough time to uh, fill in all the white spaces. But this was our idea for a, a poster from the abstract that we were given. So we welcome comments and critiques. And we had a question to that, hopefully the presenter can resolve. Go on, Francis. Um... I mean, I think I think this is a real. Considering we had only twenty minutes, uh, this is a. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you have done this in the past. I can see that, uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, there's a, a bit of a cheat going on here. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, given we had only twenty minutes, and uh, then obviously it takes a few minutes to get things going. Um, uh, so so this is a really good attempt. Uh, anyone else wants to comment on the on the uh, group three's uh, attempt? I must yes. I must add that as you said, it's not fair because we do this on daily basis, <laughs> and then maybe other people in other groups, it will be fairly a new area. So please don't um, feel too intimidated that maybe your group didn't do. It's just that I wasn't actually meant to be to, to, to be doing this. <laughs> I'm very used to doing this. So we were able to do this in a short time. Yes, yeah, so a, a good, I, I, that, that will also be my comment. I think in the, in the time given, um, in, I, I was in a group that we, we ended up just putting up the, the background. I mean, not the background, just formatting the, the sheet and the time was up. <laughs> Francis, I mean, thank you for doing this. It's uh, for those who have not prepared a poster. I mean, we, uh, I and Francis had a. a so, uh, those who don't know, uh, Francis, Dr. Francis Breco, he's obviously um, my colleague. Uh, he's in University of Kent. Um, yeah, so we had we had few opportunities to do this in the past. Uh, so, uh, in any case, this is the. Uh, overall idea and uh, that uh, we will try to present the uh, poster in, in this manner and considering we had only uh, 15 minutes to do this it's unfair on anybody to kind of expect for us to expect uh, to do a brilliant job but this is this is this is an idea to uh, prepare or put things in different sections so then people can uh, go jump from one section to another and also sort of having a balance between different so grouping them in different parts um, so to speak so I think that's that's a, that's the idea, and that you've done a brilliant job there, Francisco. Thank you. So we we had a question from our yeah. group. Yeah. Um. So we asked if we had to include an abstract. I thought that maybe for a poster, you always want a good balance between text and images, mm -hmm. so you can capture your abstract an introduction into one session and maybe under one heading as introduction so that it's an opportunity to minimize the amount of test and use that space to maybe make your poster more graphical. But we want to see what the views are on having an abstract and introduction in a poster. Well, as you know very well, uh, Francis, that there are no set rules when it comes to preparing a poster. Um, I personally would like an abstract, so I would, uh, I would probably prepare a poster in a similar fashion as you have done. And I would probably have a text box which stretches from one end to another uh, here uh, with maybe one or two or three bullet points at max, uh, sort of kind of summarizing everything uh, what is presented in the poster. 
Because the same rule applies here again, isn't it? That, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, I don't know, you can't see my cursor, but uh, I've just been uh, hovering my cursor on top of your slide. So just under the author's name, I'd have a text box which stretches from one end to another uh, and then have one or two or three bullet points. Uh, because, because once again, I mean, that will be my personal preference. And once again, uh, it will depend on the data you're presenting, how much data you have, how much data you're presenting on the poster, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but that, because once again, no one is going to read the introduction. No one is going to read the materials and methods section and unless something is very exciting uh, happening there. They'll read the title. They'll probably then maybe, if there is a, uh, an opportunity for them to look at the summary very quickly, they may be able to do that. And then look, they look at the figures. So it's just maximizing the chances of explaining things to them as quickly as possible. So I would have few bullet points if I have the space available. If I don't, if there's plenty of data, then I'll start cutting down texts from other places to make sure that I, I have sort of put the, the fruits of my hard work on the poster instead of the text. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So um, any other group? I, I was jumping from groups to groups. Uh, uh, so I, I've noticed that people were at different sort of stages uh, in the poster preparation. And I fully appreciate that uh, it's, it's not a 15 minute job. And hopefully, I think that this is a good exercise in some ways uh, because now you've realized that it takes more than 15 minutes to prepare a poster. Um, so, <laughs> so in the future, when you have to do it, hopefully you'll give yourself more than 15 minutes to do it. Uh, it, it, yeah. it, takes, it takes a good few hours to put it. Uh, and make yeah. it look attractive, uh, professional, and so on and so forth. Um, I, I know that some of you started uh, working on it and you, uh, anything what you have done, I think it may still be worth sharing that, even if it is just uh, preparing us, uh, adjusting the size of the slide and so on and so forth, because I noticed that some people were still not fully onto the idea of how to uh, adjust the, uh, the size. So I noticed that one group, they were trying to do that. So you want to actually, uh, share the screen and just tell everybody how you adjusted the size of this slide, uh, for example, just just uh, so everyone is clear. Uh, uh, notice that it's, uh, Yvonne has taken, taken charge, so if, go ahead, Yvonne. Um, yeah, so I, I was in, now I'm not sure which group because I kept on moving from one to the next. Yeah. But I, I think it was group two or group one. And um, I realized that, um, uh, most of the people in that group joined the discussion late. And so all I did was to, I, I don't think I even spoke about how it was. I just um, did the thing and showed, used the steps that you had given. So just went to, um, picked up the uh, presentation, went into presentation mode. And then, uh, I mean, went into, PowerPoint and went to, uh, is it a view? Yes. Uh, design usually helps. So uh, it's design, yes, it's yeah. design. And then mm -hmm. went to the slide size yeah. and adjusted it according to the um, what you gave. I went to custom slide size and then adjusted it, gave the, uh, the sizes as uh, I have stated here, as you can see on the screen now. And that was it. So I, I just started typing the, the title uh, and then the time was up. So basically that's what we did. But um, what my group, in that group, one of the things was I got the sense that some of them were on the move. And so they would perhaps practice afterwards. They would take their time and go through the presentation and then practice. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely fine. Uh, thank you for that, Yvonne. Uh, anybody else has any questions? I mean, I, I, I can see that the time is running out slowly. Um, so anybody has any, any questions which I could answer here? As I said, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll say I'm happy to send the presentation to you, Yvonne. So it's recorded yes, anyway. Yes, please. Um, yes. So uh, people can go through the presentation um, and hopefully yes. it'll help if, when they're doing that in their spare time. Uh, yes. It'll be much easier for them to, uh, to follow everything. Um, and then uh, 
the video I had embedded in my presentation, which is on the last slide and the paper, I'll, I'll forward that to you. Of course, we can forward that to you. Great. Uh, Great. Because that, that video is, uh, is a, a bit more detailed. I had only well, 20 minutes or so to do this. Uh, uh, so that video is, I think, 15, 20 minutes long as well, but there's a bit, a bit more of a detail in there. Um, so you could, uh, they could always watch that. And, uh, uh, and yeah, when it comes to present, preparing the poster next time, they hopefully they'll do a great, brilliant job. Yes. So thank you very much. Um, if we don't have any questions, we will wrap it up. Um, but can we have our evaluation, please? We will post our evaluation and ask for everybody who is here to please participate in our evaluation. Um, just give us a sense of what we could do better, what we have done well, and let's see what else we can do to improve. So please, we have just, maybe we'll give ourselves a minute or two I know some of you are driving, but um, I don't know. Will you just stop <laughs> and evaluate the work of us? Uh, I yeah. think I, I think I shouldn't evaluate myself, so I'm, I'm going to uh, leave it. But uh, Yvonne, would you be able to tell me the results of the evaluation? Uh, it would be good to know what, what people thought of the presentation. Yes, I, I, I will after, after the session. Excellent. I'll send you the results. Okay. So please, it's just a few questions. Just six questions. Please, Auntie, when I've submitted my evaluation, can I now exit the page? Uh, yeah, once you submit, it should it should leave your screen. If you click submit, it should it should leave your screen. Yes, I've done that, but I'm asking if I can leave the Zoom now since I'm driving. Ah, okay. Please go ahead. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. So, um, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Vivek Trivedi for your time, for the research that has gone into this, for sharing your experience with us. And thank you to all of you for joining. I see some quite senior colleagues online. I know some of you already are experienced in this. Thank you, Francis, for joining us today. Thank you to all of you. And uh, hopefully we, we meet again next month um, to build our capacity. And now we are looking at presenting. You have your work, you have your, um, your, your poster, or you have, for, for some reason, you've, you've been given the opportunity to give an oral presentation and now you're ready to present. And so I'll say thank you once again and say thank you to the almighty God for making this possible, for giving us grace and strength and for bringing us all together and for helping us to learn together. And with that, I will, I think I should put my microphone, my um, video on and say, thank you once again, Dr. Vivek Trivedi. And thank you to all of you and bye-bye. See you. Thank you very much. Good luck guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.